Antarctica isn't just cold, it's alive. The ground shifts, ice cracks, winds roar past 300 kilometers per hour. So how do you build anything here and keep it standing? In our last video, we explored how countries are building in one of the most extreme places on Earth. And the response? Huge. You asked for more, and there's a lot more to show. So today, we're heading back to the bottom of the world. From labs that generate zero emissions, to bases that physically rise with the snow, these are some of the most extreme builds on the planet. Let's kick things off with one of the most striking bases on the continent, South Korea's Jangbogo Station. Built on the edge of the Ross Sea, it's a perfect example of how modern design, national pride and polar science come together in one of the harshest places on Earth. Opened in 2014, this is South Korea's second Antarctic base and one of the most modern on the continent. From the outside, it looks a bit like a stealth aircraft. That's by design. Its low-profile aerodynamic shape was tested in wind tunnels to resist some of the fiercest gusts on Earth. The outer panels are even textured like a golf ball. Why would engineers design a building to mimic a golf ball? Turns out these dimples help cut through Antarctic winds and stop snow from sticking at all. Raised foundations let snow drift underneath instead of piling up around doors and windows. The station has 16 connected buildings covering around 4,600 square meters. It's laid out in a Y-shaped plan, with one wing for science, one for living, and one for operations. That layout isn't just efficient, it's also safer. Each wing is fire-separated, with multiple exits for fast evacuation if something goes wrong. Inside, insulation is taken seriously. Windows have five layers of glass, and the entire station is sealed to hold in heat when temperatures drop below minus 30 degrees Celsius. A combined heat and power system helps recycle energy, and the buildings are angled to block prevailing winds and maximize sunlight in summer. Getting the station here was a mission in itself. Prefabricated modules were built in Busan, South Korea, shipped to New Zealand, and then carried by Korea's icebreaker, Aroun, across thousands of kilometers of rough seas. In summer, the station supports up to 62 researchers. In winter, it drops to about 23. But life here runs on careful limits. Data usage is so restricted that automatic smartphone updates are blocked, and residents are asked to keep online activity to a minimum. And since fresh food is rare in Antarctica, the station has its own small plant lab, a kind of indoor garden where they grow leafy greens and herbs under artificial lights. It's not just about nutrition. Having something green and alive indoors makes a difference during the long polar night. Next, we head to East Antarctica, specifically to the Utsteinian Ridge, where Belgium built one of the most ambitious Antarctic stations ever attempted. Princess Elizabeth Station was officially opened in February 2009 after two seasons of construction during the short Antarctic summers. It's known as the first zero-emission research station in the world, powered entirely by wind and solar energy. But getting it built was no easy task. The ridge sits on solid granite, which caused trouble right from the start. Multiple drill heads broke just trying to install the foundation. Once the anchoring was done, the rest of the station was built in Belgium, packed into 100 containers, shipped from Antwerp, and then reassembled on site. The design is compact and extremely well insulated. The wall system includes nine different layers, aluminium, wood, insulation, and even craft paper, all selected to make the station airtight and energy efficient. Its aerodynamic shape helps it stand firm in winds that can hit 300 kilometers per hour, 190 miles per hour. Everything here runs on renewable energy. Nine wind turbines, up to 54 kilowatts total, 284 solar panels, producing about 420 kilowatt hours per day, 30 solar thermal panels for heating water, 192 battery packs for storage, and soon, hydrogen fuel cells may be added for extra backup. Even the electricity is smart. A microgrid developed by NG and Schneider Electric constantly balances supply and demand, keeping things efficient, stable, and safe. 
Princess Elizabeth can host up to 50 researchers, with labs, sleeping areas, and shared spaces all packed into a compact layout. It's more than just efficient; it's also designed to leave no trace. All wastewater is treated and reused, and any trash or waste is flown out. And here's something different: in 2021, the station became home to Venturi Antarctica. The world's first electric polar exploration vehicle. Belgium station shows what's possible when you design for efficiency from the ground up. But what if you needed to build fast and in one of the toughest places on Earth? That's exactly what India set out to do, and the result: one of the most unique stations in Antarctica, built from shipping containers and designed to leave almost no trace. India's Baharathi Station, located in the Lassaman Hills along Pradesh Bay, is the first Antarctic research base in the world built entirely from modified shipping containers, 134 of them to be exact. Prefabricated in Germany and shipped via Antwerp and Cape Town, the station was assembled in just 127 days during Antarctica's short summer window and officially opened in March 2012. Look closely, and you'll notice this station doesn't actually sit on the ice; it floats above it on stilts. Why? Because even a single snowstorm can bury ground-level doors in hours. Wind tunnel testing helped shape its aerodynamic design, while stiff Y-shaped columns in the front and a concrete core in the back keep it steady in wind gusts of up to 200 miles per hour (322 kilometers per hour). Inside the ground floor is all science, labs, storage, and technical systems. The second floor is for living, single and double rooms, a kitchen, gym, library, office space, and even a small operating theater. Up top, the third level houses air systems and opens to a rooftop terrace. Power comes from three kerosene-fueled combined heat and power (CHP) units. The heat they generate while producing electricity. Is reused to warm the entire station. There's no central heating system, just smart energy use. Baharathi also supports space research. It's used by India's space agency ISRO to receive satellite data and beam it back to India in real time. The whole thing is designed to be removed without leaving a trace, in line with the Antarctic Treaty's environmental rules. And with a 25-year operational life, it's built to last. Quietly proving that modular, efficient, and compact design can still pack a scientific punch. Oh, and India is one of only nine countries with more than one research station inside the Antarctic Circle. It currently operates two active stations, Vaharathi and Maitri, with a third, Dakshin Gangotri, now serving as a supply base. Other countries with multiple stations include the U.S., Russia, China, and Australia. While India is expanding its scientific reach across multiple sites, Brazil faced a very different kind of challenge: starting over from scratch. And what they built next became one of the most impressive comebacks on the continent. In 2012, a fire tore through Brazil's original base in Antarctica, destroying nearly everything. But instead of giving up, Brazil made a decision to come back stronger. After years of planning and a $100 million investment, the country opened a brand new station in 2020, and it's not just bigger; it's smarter. The new facility spans 4,500 square meters, almost double the size of the original. It's made up of two sleek linear buildings raised off the ground on stilts. That design helps keep snow from piling up around entrances. It also works with the terrain, making it easier to assemble and more efficient to move between areas during storms. The station was designed by Estudio 41, a Brazilian architecture firm that brought together a team of around 15 specialists, including experts in wind resistance, geotechnics, and thermal insulation. Their goal was simple but tough: make something that could handle Antarctica's extreme weather while staying efficient and livable. To bring the design to life, Brazil partnered with the Chinese construction company CEIEC. Inside, there are 17 labs equipped for research in everything from microbiology to climate science. 
Some of them have high-tech gear like DNA readers, ultra-freezers and advanced water purifiers. It's also built to support the people working here for months at a time. There's a gym, a library and comfortable shared living spaces. Every detail, from the insulation in the walls to the solar panels and wind turbines on the roof, was designed to balance sustainability and comfort. The entire structure was prefabricated and shipped to Antarctica over several seasons, with construction only happening during the short summer window. Even the location was carefully chosen, between two meltwater lakes and just 45 metres from the shoreline, to make the most of natural resources and protect the fragile environment. While Brazil focused on starting fresh after disaster, Germany took a different approach, designing a station that could outsmart Antarctica's biggest enemy, snow. Instead of being buried like its predecessors, Germany Neumeyer 3 station was built to rise. Every year, a metre of snow piles up around it, so engineers designed the entire station to stand on 16 massive hydraulic legs. These legs can lift the 2,300-ton structure by up to a metre, keeping it above the snow line. The process is smooth enough that people inside barely notice, and it's all controlled by software that moves every leg in sync. The station itself is a four-storey steel structure, 68 metres long, 24 metres wide, and with almost 5,000 square metres of floor space. That's about the size of a small football field. Inside, there are labs, living spaces, a kitchen, offices, and even an underground garage dug into the snow. Neumeyer 3 was also shaped to handle brutal Antarctic winds. Engineers tested it in wind tunnels to find the most aerodynamic design. And because it sits on a floating ice shelf, the whole station moves about 160 metres every year toward the sea. Power comes from three diesel generators, with help from a wind turbine to save fuel. And when the station eventually reaches the end of its life, it can be fully dismantled, leaving almost nothing behind. Planning started in 1999, construction began in 2007, and the station opened in 2009. It cost around 39 million euro and is designed to last 25 to 30 years. Today, it's one of the most advanced polar research stations in the world and a blueprint for how to survive and thrive in the harshest places on Earth. Germany's Neumeyer 3 might be a marvel of modern engineering, but now let's travel back in time to one of the earliest Antarctic outposts still in use today. Japan's Saiowa station has been active for nearly 70 years, and it's still going strong. Japan's Saiowa station has been running non-stop since 1957. That makes it one of the oldest continuously operating stations in Antarctica. The oldest one is Argentina's Okadas station, which was established in 1904 and a symbol of Japan's return to global science after World War II. It's located on East Ongul Island, just four kilometers off the coast of Antarctica. Because it's right by the sea, the climate is a bit milder than its stations farther inland. Even in winter, average temperatures hover around minus 10 degrees Celsius, and wind speeds are less intense than in the center of the continent. When it first opened, Saiowa had just four small buildings. Today, it's grown into a complex of around 70 structures, spread across more than 7,000 square meters. That includes living quarters, power plants, storage, science labs, and monitoring stations. It's a self-contained scientific village on the ice. To deal with the snow, most of the buildings are raised about a meter above the ground on concrete supports. This stops snow from piling up around the walls. The station has also been rebuilt and expanded over time, including a major construction project in 1993 that added a large central building made with fireproof timber and new joinery systems. That single building alone took over 2,000 person days to complete. Inside Saiowa, Japanese researchers study everything from atmospheric gases to cosmic rays. In 2018, they even installed new cosmic ray detectors in two refrigerated shipping containers. They also monitor CO2 and methane levels, track long-term climate data, and study the Earth's magnetic field. And here's a fun detail. 
Because teams rotate every year, they've developed systems to pass on knowledge between construction crews so nothing is lost. Some buildings on site are still standing from the 1960s, proof of how carefully this station is maintained. While Japan's Saiwa station shows how endurance and tradition can keep a base running for over 65 years, Poland is taking a different approach, starting fresh. Poland, Henryk Akstowski Station, located on King George Island, just 75 meters off the Antarctic mainland, is being completely rebuilt. The new version is designed to handle snow, storms and shifting ice much better than before. And it's not just about survival. It's also about comfort, science and sustainability. The entire new station is being built in Poland, then shipped down in 113 containers. Everything from walls to water systems is prefabricated to make the most of Antarctica's short summer construction window. Once assembled, the structure will sit on steel stilts, three meters above ground to prevent snow from piling up. The building's shape is inspired by an upside-down airplane wing, an aerodynamic form that hugs the ground in high winds. It'll be clad in shiny copper aluminium alloy, giving the station a golden appearance that also resists salt, wind and corrosion. Inside, wooden finishes and nautical-inspired rooms will help soften the harsh exterior environment. There's also smart engineering throughout. Some parts of the building can be shut down during winter to save energy. A greenhouse will grow fresh produce year-round. Melted glacier water will feed into a reservoir for drinking and daily use. And wind turbines will help power the station, along with upgraded fuel and water systems. Every room will have big windows for natural light and panoramic Antarctic views. The rebuild is expected to cost around 40 million US dollars, with the Polish government increasing funding in 2024 to support the upgrades. Once complete, likely by 2027, the station will house up to 70 people in summer and around 20 in the winter. From wind-powered labs to buildings that rise above the snow, these Antarctic outposts show what humans can build, even in places nature never meant us to stay. They're more than just buildings. They're lifelines for science, strategy and survival. Which one would you want to visit or live in for a season? Let us know in the comments. And if you want more Megabuild stories like this from the edge of the world and beyond, make sure to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching it and see you in the next one.